And let's go get started here. And we'll go to the modules there. Hello, everyone in the EDAP 690 class, the class that Mayer built. Well, as you saw in the announcement that I sent out, we had a little bit of a uh, hiccup last Wednesday, the uh, 12th. And for some reason, Collaborate Ultra lost our recording. Um, it happens. You know, it's just one of those things that happens. But it gave me a chance to kind of sit back and look at this particular module. And I realized when I looked at it, there was an awful lot of stuff that I'm throwing at you in this module. And what I want to do is I think I want to take a step back and divide it up into actually two classes. Because if you look at all the different kinds of um, storytelling apps, uh, online resources that I put in here, there's an awful lot. Plus, I've had a lot of comments and questions from people who are now in the Google, who are using uh, a Chromebook, uh, they're using Google Classroom in their classroom. They're asking for things that they can use with their kids. So I wanted to include that. Uh, so what we're going to do today is I'm going to walk you through the first part, which you can see. I've kind of broken it down. And we're going to look at something called Beyond, Biteable, and Zimmer Twins. And then next week when we meet again, um, I will go over the Make Beliefs comics and storyboard that and the Chromebook app called Toontastic. Um, I want to review quickly our mayor because we get a little confused when we start playing with stuff like this because sometimes mayor can fit in very nicely and other times not all of mayor's principles do fit in. When you read Mayer, one of the things that he points out is it isn't necessary that all 12 of his principles have to be followed. And I think that's something that we, we need to realize. And I think it's something that we shouldn't adhere to blindly. We need to realize, first and foremost, are we using the multimedia tools to actually transmit uh, information to kids uh, in a way that is understandable and that follows, I think, the most important rules of Mayer's principles. And let me go over those real fast. I think really that these are the, the important Mayer principles. Coherence principle, the idea that you don't throw ex, extraneous, distractible stuff when you are creating multimedia. Um, I've always used the example of the little bean person in PowerPoints. Now, and let's take a step back here too. Well, the other thing Mayer does is in his writings, he leans a lot toward the PowerPoint as his sort of focus. Uh, and as we've already seen, we're going to be using stuff. We're not even going to talk about PowerPoint. Um, we talk about PowerPoint, sort of allude to it in tools like uh, Biteable. Uh, you, as we get into Biteable, you'll look at it and you'll realize, oh gosh, that looks like just PowerPoint on um, steroids. When we do Toontastic and we look at Chromebook, I'll go ahead and we'll do a quick little um, look at uh, slides inside of do, um, the Google Suite because slides is perfectly okay to use. And I can show you some of the things you can do in slides that make it a very much a tool that, that Mayer would approve of. When you look at things like signaling principle, letting people know it's coming, that's that should be true for anything that we do. Um, here's one, redundancy principle. So now we're looking at graphics and narration, uh, that they learn better from graphics and narration, better than using graphics and narration and on-screen text. I think that one gets a little bit confusing to people. And what we need to be careful about there is, is what Mayer is getting at is, it is the overloading of the short-term memory through the dual channel. So if you're throwing something at somebody that has text and narration and graphics, that gets a little more difficult. And then on top of that, if you violate the coherence principle, then, oh my goodness, you're in real trouble then. So we need to realize that having a good flow 
a good flow with clear text is just as good as having narration and animation. Although we can do, as you'll see in, in Beyond, you can definitely do uh, narration. Spatial, temporal, you know, these are, again, things that we know we don't throw things on a screen that are widely separated and we don't separate things by time or space. And, and in segmenting, we know that's a good, that's just good teaching. We chunk things down so kids could understand them. And then the other part, what I think is really important is that the modality principle where he says that people learn better from graphics and narration than from animation and on-screen text. Again, you'll see in Biteable, I think if you adhere very carefully to signaling and to segmenting, then the modality principle there uh, doesn't necessarily, we're not necessarily in violation of it. We're just going at it a different way. As I said, these are principles. And I can remember when he first started, Mayor only had nine. <laughs> so these things are always in flux that it just depends upon um, who he has as a graduate assistant a lot of times. And they'll point out things and they'll go back and they'll revisit. The other thing that um, he also talks about is personalization. It sounds better or it is better if you have narration done with your voice as opposed to a machine voice. I tell you what, when we look at um, Beyond, I'll let you make the distinction between which you would rather to use. Uh, in Toontastic, same thing. You can use your own voice um, and you can decide whether or not you like that. All right, but let's talk first about storytelling. So storytelling has been around for a long time in the use of technology. Um, it goes back to the days of when Apple first came out with iMovie um, and we had the Microsoft platform with its uh, story. And so it's been around a while, but I think what we have to realize is how are we using it? It's one thing to go out and just shoot some video and put it in and stand around and say, oh, look what a kid made. Why we want to look at it is because we want to look at it as a way for people to understand their world. It's a better way for students to remember things if you tell stories. And it helps in a lot of ways for people to focus on what they're talking about if, if we follow Mayer's principles. Now, in the area of research in this, I think we're probably one of the leading lights in this is a gentleman by the name of George Siemens. Uh, Dr. Siemens is out of Canada, the University of Athabasca, I think. And he came up with a theoretical idea about something he calls people to people or P to P. And in that, he talks about this idea that we've been telling stories around the campfire to each other ever since the beginning of humanity. And this idea that we should use the capability of telling stories as a way to pass along information to our students. Also, students using tools to tell stories is an excellent way for them to demonstrate that their knowledge um, of whatever content we're trying to uh, get them to get their heads around. It's good stuff. I've always enjoyed working with digital storytelling with kids. It is not something to do lightly. Um, there's a lot of preparation you have to do, but as you'll see when we get down in here and we uh, next week when we play with Chromebooks, there are some tools out there that are extremely simple to use um, that do make it a an assignment you could give one day and have kids uh, complete it within that time frame. It you know doesn't take weeks of doing. All right. I'm going to take you through the first three today, which is Vion, Biteable, and Zimmer Twin. So let's go diving into Vion. Now, background, a little history. Vion at one time was called GoAnimate, and it was a tool that was used uh, primarily in schools. 
it um, was a great tool. I, I dearly, dearly loved GoAnimate. I had a paid account. I let people use it all the time. And then I don't know what happened. I don't know if they ran out of, uh, they just didn't make any money off of it. They certainly made money off of me. Um, I highly recommend it for use in schools. But then they were bought out and turned into this Vion. The licensing structure of it now is, let's, let me show it to you real quick. If you go in and look at an enterprise license structure, it is um, an annual, there you go, professional $999 a year. It's a little steep. And that's a shame because they really had a re they have a really nice product. Now, what you're going to do for our purposes is you're going to create a free trial that will last 14 days. Pay attention to that. Uh, so when the clock starts running after you create it, get it made, get it posted, let me know before the 14 days is up. And I'll be honest with you, I'm not sure if it matters about the 14 days, be honest with you. Uh, in other words, see up here, it says I have nine days left. Now that's because I put this together last week when everything went haywire in the collaborate. And so it says I have nine days left to um, work within this free trial. The thing is, after the free trial, if I have moved my story, you can see I've already had, I've played around with a couple of them, then we can still see them once you put them someplace, which I find interesting. So anyway, let me go up here and let's start. So Beyond is an extremely, extremely detailed tool. Um, you'll get, you can get lost in here. Uh, because it's just it's just so much fun to play with. It can be a very powerful tool for creating content for kids to have access to. I'm there are three different styles. There is the contemporary style, as you can see, it kind of has sort of a modernistic look. I'm not a fan, frankly. I like the business friendly, unless I'm doing something where I really do want to have the explanation front and center. And then I'll use the whiteboard animation, which is that cool where it looks like it's drawing on the whiteboard, um, sweeps things away with a hand, kind of like what Paltoons does, uh, but a lot, lot more intricate and detailed than Paltoons. But I'm going to start over here with business friendly, and I'm going to select a style. And when I do that, it takes a little while for it to load in, so don't, you know, don't freak out. Remember you are doing this through the network and so if you have a very slow network connection this is going to be rather frustrating because you'll click on things and it'll take a while for it to load do not try to do this on a in a wi-fi uh, situation unless you're on a really good wi-fi so when it comes in it shows you uh, a slide that's using as a placeholder the web always has to have placeholders because it can't stand Nothing. It has. It doesn't like the null set. There must always be something there. So it has this slide. I don't have to keep this slide. I can right click on it and I can delete it. And now it's waiting for me to put a slide in. So I'm going to click here and I'm going to come up here and choose a template. My template choices are everything from computer science to, well, everything. And as you can see, I am not stuck when I'm using slides. So in other words, if I were to pick space, I have to keep using the, the space. Nope, I can jump around inside of here and find things that I want to use. I'm gonna start with education and I'm going to go and find a beginning slide that'll be the slide that I want to use uh, for my beginning so i'm going to go in here and i'm going to start with this one with the lady standing in front of the big chalkboard you'll see why in just a second 
Now, I'm trying to make sure that as I'm doing this, that I have, let me get rid of this extra piece right here. Okay, I wanna make sure that I've thought through what I'm doing. As you can see, there is already something here. I have a picture of a lady. I have a chalkboard with little pieces on it. I have a desk, I have a piece of paper. I have all these things here. Every single thing that I just moused over, the little boxes appear around it, is edible, meaning I can get rid of it. So if I think the desk is something that I really don't need in this particular example, I can just click on it and I can make it go away. Same thing with the books. I can click on those. So the only thing that I have left is a blank wall. So if I want to come up here and get rid of the whole blank or the whole chalkboard, I can. What about my person here? Well, if I want to change my person, I can go ahead and get rid of her. And I can come over here to where it is the characters. And as you can see, I can have a whole lot of choices of characters. Or if I click this plus right here, I can create my own character. Now, I'm not going to do that. It's simple to do. You just go in and you create your body, your head, your face, your beard, your hair, your eye, everything you that would make it look like you, you can do. Once you do that and you save it, it will save your character and you can find it and use it in your videos from now on. I'm just gonna go ahead and grab uh, a guy called Senior, <laughs> I guess because I'm a senior, and I'm gonna pull him in. I'm gonna make him a little bit bigger so he's kind of front and center. Now what I need is a prop. So these are the props right here. And I guess what I can do is I could go and look Spend all my time looking through all those categories, or I could just type in a prop that I'm looking for, and then it'll show me if there is such a prop and if I spell it right. I tell you what, let's do it this way. How about screen? Let's see if we can find something with screen. There you go. Now I've got this, and I can drag it over and put it into my shot. And as you can see, it's nice and big. Okay. Now, maybe supposedly what he's going to be talking about, um, he's going to do a thing on the planets. Let's see if there is a prop that might look like planets. Look, there is. So I could go ahead and pull all this over. Now, having said that, I could also go here. And if I have a picture of the planets, I could upload that and put it in here. Not only can I do that, I can do videos as well. It's, it's that powerful. So if I go here to upload, I think I have a planet's picture. Let's see if I still have that. Oh shoot, it doesn't look like I do. Um, but you know how to do this kind of thing. Well, let's go ahead and do it. Let's go ahead and do it. So if I wanted to have a picture of the planets that I wanna put in here, I will do a quick Google search for planets, do an images, there we go. And then I'll do a right click and I'll save the image as, I'll call it planets. And I'm gonna put it in my folder for my EDAP 690. I'll go back to beyond. I'm now gonna upload that picture that I just downloaded. Let's go find it. There it is. And now I'm going to drag that over and put it on my screen. And I'll resize it so it fits into my screen. Okay. That's simple. Um, you know, I might want to have a globe sitting down here, although I will be careful of uh, paying attention to mayor's, uh, mayor's coherence principle and not throw too many things in here that might throw us off. So I'll get rid of that. 
let's now look what we can do with what we have. So if I come over here and click on my man, I can change his expression. As you can see right now, he's kind of uh, smiling a little bit. I can change his expression and I can make him all these things. Now, if I make him neutral, let's see, does it really change? Not really. He still looks kind of like a nice old man. Um, if I make him, where's happy? There's happy. If I make him happy, he looks a little more engaging. Look at what I can do in terms of action. I can actually have him doing things um, besides just standing there. So let's go up here to poses and see what we can do. Oh, look, he's got a cane. <laughs> let's see what that one does. Um, handing a check. I don't think so. Okay. Lots and lots of different ways. Let's see if we can get a pointing. Again, use the ability to, to look for things. Just spell it right. Sorry about that. Let's see if we can find something where he's pointing. There we go. Now, we need to move him over a little bit because where he's pointing is kind of hidden. But you know what? If he is hidden by the object, I can do a right click on him and bring him to the front. And then, as you can see, his pointer is now pointing at the board. So I've got him smiling. I've got him pointing at the board. And now what can I do with him? I will select him and I'll come over here to the microphone. So now at this point, we can actually have him start talking either through recording it with our own voice through this mic recording right here, or I can do a text to speech where I can actually type it in and then he can tell me, or I can tell him what to say. Mayor, if you remember personalization principle, says that we would much rather listen to the human voice as opposed to a machine voice. Let's do it both ways, let you decide which way you think you'd like to have yours work. Some people don't like hearing their own voices. I don't have a problem with that, obviously, <laughs> but let's do it both ways. So let's go ahead and do add a dialogue and let's start with the microphone. So this is gonna pop up, I'm gonna click on here. I'm gonna watch to see, I might get an allow message, you know, flash, all that kind of stuff. So I might get an allow message and I'm going to pay attention to that. And it's recording. So he could now be saying, I'll tell you what, I'm going to stop that. Um, we'll do it again. I'll just give you a sense of what it sounds like. Oh, that's right. You can't hear it because I'm one on a different machine. I'm going to just uh, ignore that one. We'll do it again. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and go back in and let's record it, shall we? So I'll pick him up, come back here. Notice it came in down here. It, it is there. So I'll just highlight it and delete it. Okay. I'll come back, highlight my little man again, come back. And this time, now that I know that it's going to start recording as soon as I hit it, I'll be ready. So here we go. Hello there. Today, we are going to start learning about the planets in our solar system. I hope that this will help you understand what we'll be learning in class. I'll go ahead and stop it. Now, I am looking down here for where it comes in. And it has assigned it to my character. Notice how it does that. You see up here where it says assign audio. It's got the face of the little man. Um, and I could assign him all the way through uh, all of the slides I'm going to make if I want to. I'll show you what I mean in just a second here. Now, when I look down here, notice that my slide 
time and the recording link do not match. I have to make them match, otherwise it won't play all the way through. So I'm going to slide that forward a little bit. I'm going to try to, let's see if I come up here on my computer and turn on internal speakers. Let's see now if we can hear this. So I'm going to go do a preview. Hello there. Today we are going to start learning about the planets in our solar system. I hope that to help you understand what we'll be learning in class. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. All right. So that gives you a sense of what it sounds like and what it looks like. Now let's go ahead and add another scene. And I'm going to use it. I could do it. Let's go ahead and use the template so I can show you what it would look like. Now, notice that it is still in the education template. And as I said, I don't have to use the education template. I can search templates. Let's see what happens if I put in space. Um, our planets. There we go. And so I can now have a new slide where there's a person standing here. And I've got some text. I don't want that. So I now have got another slide. I can select my person up here. And you'll notice that I've got the same ability to have dialogue over here. So I can go in, let me slide this over a little bit, and I can now add a dialogue. Let's do the dialogue this time with text-to-speech, and let's see how it sounds. As you can see, it's a woman. And if I need to. What would it be like to stand on another planet? Okay, so now we can see uh, what it sounds like. Now, I'm going to let you make the deci decision. If you feel like that that is enough, that you think it's clear enough, then let's go ahead and, and use it now let's go ahead and, and preview this you do a lot of previewing every time you do something and beyond it what would it be like to stand on another planet it's smart to go ahead and preview from the very beginning just so you can see how it's going and let's go ahead and turn this on hello there Today, we are going to start learning about the planets in our solar system. I hope that this will help you understand what we'll be learning in class. What would it be like to stand on another planet? Okay. Now, at this point, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to now start going and uploading some pictures, which we already know how to do. Um, so that I can start having this dialogue about all the different planets. And she set the stage for what would it be like to, to be standing on that other planet. And so what I can do is I could just, again, go to my googly search. And I could do a, let's do a googly search for Mercury planet. And here we go. Let's do an image of Mercury. So here's poor old Mercury. <laughs> what we could do is we could just find the one that we think is the best shot. And we can put that. 
and we can download that and put it into our little 690. Let's see, M E R C U R Y, and save it. Go back to my Beyond Studio, and now I need a new scene. I can just either I can do it a couple of ways. I can add a blank screen scene. And if I do that, and then I come back over here, and I'm going to use what I uh, uploaded. So let's go here, my props. And I could upload uh, a prop that was what I just had. And then I could talk about it. As simple as that. So I go here. Let's go find Mercury. There it is. And we'll upload it. And now I can pull Mercury in. Nice and big and clear. Again, realize that um, this was a really good shot. Well, I need my little man back. So I'm going to bring him back into the shot. And he's now going to talk about Mercury. And I could go through and do the same thing with Venus and, of course, Mars and Jupiter and Saturn and so on. One of the things I need to be careful about that I forgot to show you was up here where it says Untitled. Make sure you put a name to that. So when you leave it and you come back, it's not gone because it will not save it unless you title it. So here we have this, all of this, and I will now go and do a preview one more time just to make sure I've got everything in here. And as you can tell, um, it's kind of slowing down because maybe my network is slowing down right about now. Don't panic. If you go in and save it or title it right away, as soon as you land here, you'll be okay. Okay. So save. Make sure you save it just to be on the safe side. And I'm going to preview it from the start. There we go. Hello there. Today, we are going to start learning about the planets in our solar system. I hope that this will help you understand what we'll be learning in class. What would it be like to stand on another planet? Okay, there's my little guy. So I'm in really good shape here. I can go back in and I can play around with my various uh, people. I could add more slides. I'm in pretty good shape. So what do we do? How do we get it out of here? Well, if you go back to your Vion page, your videos will be right here. And if I come down here and I click on him and I want to uh, share it, it will give me a link. So I will enable the link and I will now copy the link. And you already know all this, but let's go ahead and do it just in case. I'm going to go to my PW Works page. Log in. Go find my poor And I'm going to turn on my edit. Now, this is a link, so I don't have to get fancy here. I could go ahead and just click in and paste that link right in. Or if I wanted to do it to make sure that everything's going to work right, I'll go up here and I'll add a link and then I'll paste it in. And bingo. 
Now, let me make sure, let's review real fast. Remember pages and files? Yes, yes, it's okay. Pages and files, because it says in here, Steve wants you to create a new page. And when you do that, it's going to ask you to give it a name. And you know how to do all this, create a page. So now this is my module four. Storytelling page. Uh, I'm going to create the page. Okay. Thank you. And I will go into module four. And as you can see, I've already got something in here. Been working on this. So I'll come down here and I will now put in my link or I can insert it either way with a link here. You know, it's the same thing. Put it in uh, and then make sure that you give me a lesson on the nine planets. Created in beyond. Okay. And I'm going to save it. When I do that, and if I come up here and click on it, it then takes me back to where my beyond is, and it will now play the, the video for me. Hello there. Today we are... Okay, we don't need to hear him shouting at us. That's Beyond. I really, really like Beyond a lot. Um, it's just a shame that whoever owns the company decided to get <laughs> greedy, I guess. And it took it away from GoAnimate. All right, let's go look at the second one. Let's look at Biteable. Uh, Biteable, uh, I have a couple of things to warn you about with Biteable. Number one. Uh, do not use the latest, greatest, uh, it'll show you up here, it says, uh, try Biteable 3.0, don't use that one. You won't be able to um, get it out of your, uh, the presentation you make, you can't take it anywhere until you upgrade, and we don't want to do that. We want our free account. But I'm not going to go through too much of how to do this, it's very straightforward. But I will show you how to do things in it. And we're going to use one I've already created called flying. So I'm going to click on the edit. And as you can see, the way it works is it does these wonderful, wonderful uh, scenes. Now, the power of Biteable is that it has a lot of animation built into their scenes that allows you to have a very engaging looking uh, presentation. Let me give you an idea. So if I wanted to add a new scene, I would click on add scene and here they are. You have the ability to add uh, a scene and these are all content folders. So you're basically looking at what do you want the scene to have the look of before you pick it. Now, the thing about it that is a little disconcerting is you can't, like you can't get rid of, well, let's pick one right now. If I pick her, or I pick that one, as you can see, it's basically people standing next to something and I can't get rid of them, okay? So like if I picked her, when it comes in, there's no way that I can remove that. So I have to be very careful about what I'm doing um, when I'm working in here. I want to make sure that what I'm picking matches with what I'm trying to do. Either that or make something that is, and again, let me jump you back in here. You'll notice that some of these, and that you'll see in my presentation here in just a second, some of these have the ability to actually let you put 
pictures within the slide. And what you're looking for is like right here, it says image. So let's go in there and look. So in the image one, when you see this sort of box or like in this case, it's an iPad, what it's basically saying there is, is you have the ability to add your own image and then you can add text to it like in here or in here. Um, it's just standing there with the image. Now, here's a good one. So if I pick this one, it's kind of like an Animoto in the sense that I can put my picture in. And this background is just, again, a placeholder. And I can do that by uploading. I can do that by, if I go here, I can actually do a web search and look for something. Um, Let me keep going with what I had. You know, I've got to slow down here with my typing. There we go. So I have all of these different graphics that I could put in here that have to do with flying. In keeping with what my, uh, what I've got going here. Now, if I pick this airplane, and I tell it to upload it, and then I'm gonna save, and when I save and preview, watch what happens over here. You get a little spinny thing. The thing about Biteable that you need to be aware of is it is a little slow. So as you can see, I can now enter my text for this slide. And I could do something like, have you ever wondered how an airplane flies? Okay. And I can save and preview that. And again, it's going to do the same thing. A little spinny thing. And then it'll show me what it looks like. Notice I've got the same kind of look as Animoto here. It tells me I have used 40 out of 80 characters. So it gives me a sense of how much I've got to work with. Also notice that I can go in and change out the um, text. So if I wanted to look like something else. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and um, delete a couple of these things that don't really fit with what I'm trying to do here. And I'll do go ahead and delete that one as well. But let me, let me show you. So this is actually an animation that I've given a setup title to. And then here's a wonderful video. And then when you go into here, what this will do is it'll actually allow you to put the picture you want to use inside this image of a computer. And then on the iPad, he actually sweeps it away. And then you can start looking at, as the whole setup is, what are the parts of an airplane? Then we can go to the next iPad where he's looking at an engine on an airplane. And then we go to a next slide where we actually explain what the engine is for. The next slide is another part of the airplane and so on and so on and so on. One of the things that it also has is it has some really nice music that you can pick to go with it. Um, and that's under audio. Now, I'll give you a sense of what my music was that I had in here. And then I've, I'm going to change my mind about how what I want it to sound like. So here was the original music. Okay. Which is okay. You know, not, let me turn my volume down. I'm so loud. Okay, so if we listen to that, not bad. I could live with it. But then the more I was looking down here, I thought I found something that was even better. Listen to this one. Thank you. 
Okay, that's what I think I'm going to go with. So I'm going to hit preview everything. Now, this is where it slows you down. And I'm not going to do it because it'll take it forever before I can get down here to publish it. But what I have to do now is I have to click on, because it says, hey, you just did some changes here, so you need to rebuild your video. That will take a while. Go ahead and click that button, or when you're finished and you go to build the video, click on that button, and then, you know, go uh, check on dinner, go finish your cup of coffee, whatever, because it's going to take it a while to build it. Now, I can let you get a sense of what it's going to look like and sound like, so this is not the finished product I just did. This is the previous one. Now, as you can see, when I redid, <clears throat> redid it, I put the pictures of the parts of the airplane into that shot. So I think it's a, it's a much more coherent piece. Um, but, you know, if you think about what I'm doing here with Mayor, this is very Mayor-ish in the sense that uh, all the things I'm signaling, I'm segmenting, I'm setting things up. But wow, does it have some cool ways of presenting all of that. So now when I'm finished with it, and as I said, if I were to click this, it will, it'd be a good five minutes of dead air here while we sit there and watch the thing. And it has all these little cute sayings it says to you while it's doing it all. But what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to go here and I'm going to view my published video. There it is. And I'm going to go get the embed code because I can now take this and put it into my PB works. So I'm going to make sure I get all this copied. Whoops, not all of that. I'll come down here and just zoop. there we go. So I got that. I'll copy it. Where am I going to go? I'm going to go back to our good old friend, the PB works. Uh, go back to my poor PLN. I'm going to create a, no, I don't need to because I already have the file or the page created. So I'm going to go down here and find my module for storytelling. And I'm going to edit. And I'll go ahead and get rid of all this. Now remember how we do embeddable stuff. We go to insert HTML JavaScript, enter the code here. Make sure you put that little checky mark right there and you go next and you insert the plugin. I'm going to drop down below that. This is my biteable on line. Don't need the great American novel, just need you to tell me what it is I'm going to be looking at. So when I look at it, I can go, oh, yeah, that's what that was about. And I'm going to save it. Now watch what happens. There it is. Isn't that cool? All right. So you get the idea. So that was Biteable. Uh, as I said, I like Biteable as a uh, presentation tool because of all of the capability it has and the really cool uh, ways that it can show up uh, add animation and things. If you will take the time to work your way through and look at all the different choices first before you start building so you can have a plan in mind before you go. Nice tool. All righty. Let's go look at our last one. And let me clear the decks here a little bit. Our last one we're going to look at is Zimmer Twins. Now, Zimmer Twins, 
Um, let's turn on our flashy flash. And I'm going to allow it. Zimmer Twins is a very, very, very basic um, story building, storytelling tool. And it uses, as you can see up here, a series of pre-made slides that you then put together into a story. Um, and as you can see, it gives you, it does, it's not like the other where it's a folder. Once you pick it, that's what you got. <laughs> and so you basically go through and you pick the various uh, expressions actions and some of the actions are 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 that in other words they move uh, then you have expressions that you can use and then you have things that can become your title slides your ending slides your transitional slides and so on um, it's a as i said it's a very uh simple simple tool but once again, you need to familiarize yourself with the tool before you go ahead and make something with the tool. So let me give you a sense here. Let's see if my movie is still in here. Yeah. So let me give you a sense what a movie can look like. <laughs> okay, boy, that's pretty crummy, wasn't it? <laughs> so you're going to do a better job. Uh, let's go ahead and let me jump back in here and let's see if I can clean that up, shall we? You can start with a starter. So if you want to basically have a template and build from there, you can. Or you can build it from scratch, which is where we started from. So when you're here, the first thing you want to do is to give yourself a title. To do that, you go down and you pick the one that you look at that you want to use as your title. Let's go ahead and grab that guy. And as you can see, when I do that, I do have the ability to uh, type if I want to. Um, and more look at that one. Let's try that one instead. And the way I get rid of things is I just, you know, slide them off and now I've got a place to type what is let's try gravity again shall we okay all right so there's my opening shot okay so now I'm going to go back here and I'm going to do a dialog box And I'm going to have him saying, did you understand class today? All right. And then I'm going to have him, the next scene, he's going to look really disconcerted. I don't get the idea of gravity. I'll go ahead and capitalize it again because he's really upset about it. Uh, notice my spell check doesn't work, so I got to be careful. Don't get the idea of gravity. He's a little upset about it all. So if we scroll down and Oh, it reads aloud does. Let's see what it does. Can 
you help me. All right, let's go down and see if we can find his friend. Here she is. And I'm going to put her in. No, I'm not going to put her in. Uh, let's see, I got to change from Edgar to, oh, I forget her name now. Where do we change that? Oh, yeah, it's right here. Duh. I knew. <laughs> so, you know, you see down here where it says he reads aloud in the alley. So if you click on this, you can change the setting. Okay. So if you wanted him to be in the backyard, if you want him to be in a park, how about the sky? No, we don't want the sky. Let's give it away. Um, hmm, there's no classroom. That's kind of interesting. Uh, let's see. Let's just do. Okay. Now, if I want to change who it is, of course, see, I've got Edgar talking. Okay. So I'm going to bring down another scene of him talking. And I'm going to click on it. But this time, I'm going to change it to Eva. Gravity is not hard. Okay, and now I'm going to go ahead and bring her down again. And this time I'm going to have her say, it has a simple idea. And then I'll grab her again. And she's saying, all things all at the same rate. You get any idea? Okay. So now if we go up here and we actually do something with the characters. In other words, we can actually have them uh, moving. We can put that in, and let's see if I can find the one about falling. There we go. So I'm going to put her in falling. And I'm going to put in Edgar in falling. Okay. You with me? And then, of course, we'll put them in as landing. And I'll put in Edgar landing. And it's not landing, Steve. That was floating. So drag it out. All I got to do is just pull it out of the line and you get it. So now that's landing. So let's put in another landing, but this time it will be Eva who lands. So I've got Edgar landing, I got Eva landing, and the last thing I can put in here is where they're laughing. And I'm going to put that one in. Let's see if we can have him talking to us. Let's do something a little fun. Let's put a dance in so he can be dancing. 
okay? So we can be smiling after he's danced for a while. And if we need now to jump back to here, we can add in a one more where he is talking. And hey, what? Um, And then for finally, we'll come over here and we'll pick something that'll close everything out. Now click in there. Fix my spelling. And now I've got it. That simple. I'm going to save my movie. It's going to ask for a title. I'm going to go ahead and call it Gravity 2. And I'll save it. There you go. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. It's kind of silly, but it is such a simple way to create. And then the beauty of it is number one, it doesn't cost anything. Number two, you can create your own classroom and put it, uh, put your kids into it so they can create their own stuff. Um, now, how do we get this out of here? Simple. We go up here and we grab the URL that is the um, location of this video I made. I'm going to copy it. You know the rest. I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to come into my wonderful module for storytelling page. I'm now going to add that link. Drop it in. And when I save it, and we click on the link, it takes us to the video. Okie doke. So that has been part one. So today, what we went over, there were three tools that are very much um in the digital storytelling genre uh biteable is more of a presentation tool but i tell you i just i just really really like biteable i just like it the way it can really add some pop uh without making you car sick like prezi does i, I never show prezi anymore because it's just too much spinning around and just violates too much coherence principle I think that Biteable does adhere to the coherence principle. I think it uh, really does stand up under the test of Mayer. Um, the only thing that it doesn't do as Zimmer twins is it doesn't have a way for me to add narration except the narration that I can put in through the different text boxes and through the speech bubbles in Zimmer twins. Beyond beats them all to death when it comes to that. The only drawback to Beyond is it's expensive now. 
and you can get a 14 day free trial so you can do your creation pieces. Um, and after you get them created, you go put them somewhere. And I think, I think that they stick. Next week, we will take a look at Make Beliefs Comics, which is very much a comic uh, creation site. It's extremely simple to use. And I have used this one. In fact, I use it in a class here at UofL where I teach people about digital citizenship and they use this tool to create their understanding. Or we're gonna look at Storyboard That. Storyboard That is a very, very uh, lengthy tool that, um, don't worry about that screen. I just didn't log in with the right one. This is a very, very uh, deep tool. You could make some really good comics um, using it. And then finally, uh, I'll be doing next class on a Chromebook. And um, just to show you that I could do everything on a Chromebook that I do on a, my Mac here or a PC at, at UofL, using Toontastic, which is a free Chrome app that you could put if you have Chromebooks in your classroom, you need to have this app on your Chromebooks. And that will be next week. As always, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, um, you know how to get a hold of me, 502-457-2937. Um, if we need to get together, we can get together either face-to-face -face or virtually, do a virtual office visit using the same ability that I have here for recording classes. And that, of course, is the Collaborate Ultra. It's really straightforward. And even when we're in that kind of environment, we can give you the screen and you can show me things that you've been doing to just double check to make sure that you are getting it done right. So I will see you this Wednesday when we won't have, because I'm not going to allow it, we won't have any troubles with the Collaborate Ultra. See you then.